There was a history of this. This, you know, not that you can say this wasn't a surprise, but my daughter had tried for several years to get away from him. We finally got her away from him, and she wasn't going back. And this is what happens. This is a domestic violence at the extreme. This is, and she blamed herself, saying, "If I just would have stayed, my baby would still be alive." And it's not her fault. She did what she was supposed to do. If she would have stayed. It would have been all of them. Visitation. The system should have not given him visitation, not with his history. He had so many charges of endangering the welfare of a child, vehicular assault. He was the driver in the accident in 2007 that took the life of her first baby. She was five months pregnant. And they got to work hard to get justice for these people because they owe it to them. To all of them. When was the, the last time that um, Jamie had seen Ethan? Thursday. Adam's visitation started Thursday until I can't remember, mon until Monday. Thir they had him three and a half days each. Monday. Oh. Jamie had custody of the children. They had split visitation. He had the night before. The night he was supposed to bring them home, he had come to where we are and asked Jamie if he could keep the kids one more day because he was going to jail on Wednesday. He truly believed he was going to jail for beating on her. So Jamie agreed to it. They have him till which day? Till Tuesday. Tuesday. Was he bringing them back from the scaffold? Like, why, why were they all in the same place? Excuse me, I didn't know. When, when it happened, well, I'm wondering why. It, His like, mother had them overnight. Okay. okay. Which he, the children were not supposed to be around his mother ever. The mother has an order of protection against her because of my oldest grandson, Adam, was burnt three times by her by the time he was a year old. Judge Shank ordered that this woman was never to be around this child, supervised, unsupervised, never. And the children were at her home when this happened. So they were supposed to be living with him at the... Not right. living with him, visiting with him at his resident in Pine Haven Circle. Right. Yes. Unsupervised visitation. It should have been supervised. The morning this happened, Adam Field called me, wanting to know where Jamie was. He was upset. I said I would try to contact Jamie. I was, had no intention on doing that. His mother then called me and said, well, I heard, someone told me that Jamie doesn't want her kids back. I says, Judy, you know that was never said. She never said that. Adam takes the phone from her, and I said, Adam, you know Jamie never said that. No, no, I know, I never said that. That's not a, that I was getting repeated phone calls that morning. The mother calls me back again. Adam's got a gun. He's going to kill himself. And she's crying and screaming, Adam, please don't do that in front of me. Please don't do that in front of me. The next phone call that came in was her saying, he just did it, he just did it. And we heard Adam screaming in the background, if I see a cop, I'm killing everybody in here. They then set the phone down and her and I listened on speakerphone to the entire shooting. <laughs> How did he ever have a gun? They don't know. They don't know, There's like if he always had it or... He didn't always have it. No. Somebody gave it to him. Stupid. Obviously. Yes. That's the music too. I hope so. Who was the, uh, the woman who was there as well that put it on the speakerphone? Her and I. This is in Mrs. College. She's my best friend. Sir, what's your name? Anissa. A-N-I-S-S-A. And I guess that's it in the last name. Kelly. That's easy. So you guys both were listening? Yes. Who who was at the house that put it on the speaker phone? She was. Me. Oh, and you, you weren't there? Yes, we were both she sitting there. there. I, I got the conversation. Judy told me he just did it, he just did it. I started screaming, handed her the phone. I called 911. Called but you must have thought he killed phone. himself at that point. Yeah, exactly. We had no that's idea until said. after all this was done. And I had called 911 and I told them that Adam said if he sees any cops, he's going to kill everybody in that house. She got and I do understand that the state troopers had to do what they had to do. It was, what do you do in that situation? But he seen the cop, first cop car and that was it. They didn't have a chance either. Yeah, it was...
and did just wishing he finished himself off a little better. Was there anything that that had been said that you had heard that might have motivated him to do that? He knew she wasn't coming back to him this time. He was devastated. He was going to jail. He knew she was not coming back. Two two days prior to this, he had texted me wanting to know where Jamie was. And I said, Adam, he said, she's never coming back. We finally got her out of there. You'll never black and blue her again. He sent me another text saying, I wish everybody would forgive me. This is something I've heard throughout the years. And I wrote back to him. I just buried one son. I'm not burying another child. How long have they been together? Three years. Well, she, so she wasn't there. No, no, she was not there. She wouldn't be here right now. That's right. right. That's right. She wanted to go there. Okay. She wanted to go there and get her kids. And I said, Jamie, no. she didn't, had no idea this was going on. You know, she was, Mom, I got to go there and get my kids. I said, No, you come to me, Jamie, please. I'm begging you, just come straight to me. And she did. God. And that's when Officer Race came up and told us that the baby had been deceased. And that's when we realized all the gunshots that we heard was... It, there were so many gunshots, you almost couldn't believe it that was, it was gunshots. It sounded horrible, it was horrific. It sounded like a recording just kept repeating itself, repeating itself. The so Western. you heard the troopers, too. You heard it all. We yes, heard everything. we heard it all. And we... <laughs> couldn't believe we it. We heard them ask where the baby was. A friend had come over and said they heard on the scanner that a baby had been shot. This is how this is all building up. And we still think that he shot himself. We can't understand what, what everything is even, you know, what all the shots even were. You know? And now we know. He's a big guy. He must have took a lot of Get him down. It wasn't enough. But he did threaten to kill himself, you believe? Did he yeah, shot absolutely. himself? I don't know if he no, shot himself. I don't think, I don't he, think he did. Had the but he threatened that over the years. Every time Jamie tried to leave, I'll kill myself. I, what I said, what I texted to him was, I just buried one of my children. I'm not burying another. She did what she was supposed to do. So I go back to school. She will. The baby Adam staying with you? Absolutely. That's the one and a half year old, yes. Okay. Jamie and the baby. And you live in, um, Rome? And obviously they were both Adam's children. Yes. Do you know who the other kid might have been at the house that day? The children? They, were, they said they were three. Yeah, her name was Cheyenne. She's one of Adam's mother's adopted children. They're not really adopted. Uh, her niece was on drugs and she took the kids. And there was another woman? About was Adam Field's sister. His mother and his sister. I didn't hear any male voices until the police came.